What's up guys, this is Alex from Xtrades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And if you are here at this video, it's probably because you survived a chaotic week last week with the FOMC and also big tech earnings. There is a couple things that, that do happen this week. You can go to the economic calendar here. We have nothing scheduled for Monday, luckily. Tuesday, we do have Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking at the Economic Club of Washington. Um, this could be a non-event since pretty much what he said. At, you know, People could take what he said at the FOMC meeting as written in stone already. Um, he was pretty dovish. He didn't really give any hawkish tones that scared the market. Um, pretty much, he did exactly what was expected. They only did a 0.25 basis point hike. And we were hoping, you know, bears were hoping at least that, you know, he, we would see him kind of, you know, put economic conditions, you know, back in place where, you know, where they should be with rate hikes and, you know, through a rate hike, rate hike cycle, which is normally, I mean, it's going to have pressure on earnings. It's going to have a pressure on the economy etc. You could just see, hear it in his voice. He's a little bit more optimistic about where we're headed. We're not seeing, you know, a tightening in the labor market as well as the inflation coming down, which kind of gives it that soft landing narrative, right? That, you know, everybody was hoping for. But other than Jerome Powell speaking Tuesday, we do have Fed Vice Chair Michael Barr speaking as well. Wednesday, we have more Fed speakers. We got John Williams, Fed Governor Lisa Cook. Um, we got Fed Vice Chair Michael Barr and the Atlantic Fed President Raphael Bostic. We also have Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari, Fed Waller as well. So a bunch of Fed speakers. So, I mean, be prepared to see, you know, some shiny headlines come out on the newswire. We have initial jobless claims, continuing jobless claims. Gives a little hint into the labor market. Another thing with the labor market, at the FOMC meeting, you could just see that Powell was pretty much kind of shrugging off the labor market. And maybe, you know, it didn't really matter that we haven't seen that dip, you know, in the labor market that you know everybody was hoping for to show that fed policy is working because regardless inflation is still coming down we're barely seeing tightening in the labor market and that does give the soft landing narrative you know that everybody is hoping for we do have friday which i would argue this is the biggest economic data of the week uh it's the consumer sentiment this does give you know mid-session volatility about 30 minutes after the open it always comes out at 10 o'clock on fridays so keep a lookout for that we also have Fed Governor Waller speaking, another Fed guy, um, Patrick Harker speaking as well. But other than that, um, we do have limited event risk this week. So all the big tech earnings is out of the way. FOMC meeting is out of the way, which hopefully will give us a pretty good insight into how the market trend will go throughout here uh, from now on. Um, if Fed Powell doesn't want to talk back the market after interpreting a dovish Fed, we could see a continued rally. Um, if he does want to walk back and you know, put the market back in its place to you know where originally everybody thought it would be uh it, you know it could be bearish so i would say powell tuesday is probably the most probably has the most you know event risk out of everything otherwise big tech earnings are all out of the way you know the interest rate decision is made and uh the fomc meeting is out of the way but let's go ahead and get into our first setup here so we're looking at ups um i really like how this is breaking out here you can see we had a symmetrical wedge forming you got your downtrend line, you got test one, test two, uh, made a test three, finally breaking out. One thing you do want to see UPS do here is uh, break and hold over 191.60. 191.60 comes from this pivot right here, where you see the red line marked and the red arrow. You want to see UPS getting over that, holding as new support, um, maybe even keep seeing the MACD holding a positive signal, which currently it is then. If you zoom in here, this is a positive MACD signal. So your main level of focus, uh, just make sure it's holding outside of the breakout. Make sure it gets over 191.60 and holds. And then, you know, that can maybe take you up to 296, which is this little peak resistance right here before having just a terrible sell off. Yeah, that's UPS. Looking at calls on that, by the way, we do have an upside bias for UPS here. Looking at calls. Next, we're going into CVX. If you tuned into the last video, uh, we only had three setups, but one we did have was Exily puts. And that was because it pulled up in the supply. Um, and I think mainly Exily did pull back because, you know, CVX has such a big influence you know, being one of the top weighted names inside the Exili index. But this week, um, it is pulling directly into support at 166.83. 166.83 comes from this pivot right here. And we want to see it making a base here, maybe even reverse to the upside. So if we see it reverse to the upside, you'd probably be looking for 50 EMA area, which you can see right here. This is the 50 EMA. Um, if it pulls up into the 50 EMA, you could probably look for short term resistance about there. And that's assuming it does make the base. So that'd be your first price target, just that short-term 50 EMA 
well, I can't even really say it's short term because this is the daily time frame. So, you know, the moving average is going back 50 days and implementing that into an average. That's your more medium term moving average. Your longer term is obviously your 200 EMA, which is this one in the bottom right here. Yeah, for CVX here, we're looking at calls. Uh, this would be a counter trend reversal play. You can see despite, you know, market redness, SPY down, QQQ down, we do have CVX holding up 0.26%. So it closed green. You can consider that relative strength. XLA was a relative weakness play. So we had oil down Friday, uh, broad market up, and that was a relative weakness play, maybe displaying a rotation out of energy and now you can see why our bear thesis on XLE did come into play and energy did sell off that week. One setup that didn't work last week was Boyle, which is a natural gas play. Um, it looked very oversold, but Monday morning, it instantly gapped down like 14%. So this is before, I mean, anybody could even enter luckily. So hopefully everybody, you know, saw that 14% gap down, you know, thought twice, you know, before entering and looking for upside that did indicate you know very 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 strong relative weakness so um that was one setup that didn't work last week you know they're not all gonna work you know, we did have actually work out pretty good and our index analysis was pretty good as well so we'll get into that soon but um otherwise cvx looking at calls 166 83 support looking for a move up to daily 50 ema one thing you do have going against you macd is negative if you're a skeptic maybe wait for that to turn positive before you know trying to catch upside momentum so this will be for counter trend traders looking to get you know a dip and buy low next we're going into x this is the united states steel which has a crazy run really nice rally um probably due to u.s steel soaring to highs you can see down here in this little you can see down here in this little newswire um alert u.s steel soars to nine month high as steel shipments seen rising this year one thing i like about x here overextended to the upside pulling into the 61.8 percent retracement if you aren't familiar with the 61.8 uh, percent retracement it is called the golden ratio and when you're measuring Fibonacci levels in a downtrend, the 61.8 is usually a very strong resistance point. And you could see that in this FXI example here, retraced all the way back, hit the 61.8, strong resistance for about a you know week or two. We're going to HYG, which is high yield corporate bond ETF. You can see the same thing. You get a downtrend, we measure down from high to low, pulls up into the 61.8 strong resistance for about a week or two. So I just want to show you why X here can see resistance. Um, it's pulling up into the 61.8. You got a strong seller's wick. And you can see our two points are just from this, you know, 52 week high, or maybe it's an all time high, you know, down to this recent low. And you can see why I got this huge seller's wick. Um, Cause I just pulled right into the 61.8 which is usually a strong resistance point for people to take profit. Go down to the short term, you can see clear resistance, probably algorithms, other traders, you know, just responding to the 61.8% retracement. So I really like X here for puts. Price targets, you'd obviously be looking, you know, maybe back down to the 50% retracement. Um, you can even be maybe a little more conservative than that. If you wanted to just go down to the shorter time frames, or maybe you could use this level right here. This previous resistance at 28.91 is a short-term price target. I don't care how you do it, you know, just make sure you're not, you know, shooting all the way down for lows or something because um, markets can change instantly. So mo mostly for projections on swing trades, I'm looking, you know, for, you know, short-term moves, like something I could, you know, hold for a couple days, maybe a week or two, and then, you know, get out because I'm more of a short-term trader, as are a lot of people, because um, then you can just use that cash you made and implement it into a different sector or idea but yeah x looking at puts on this clear 61.8 percent retracement rejection with a strong seller's wick you do have the macd going against you, you do have a positive signal here so keep an eye out on that stop loss would need to be over this high arc looking at the same thing so with our 61.8 percent retracement thesis you can see hold up in the 61.8 pretty much had strong resistance at the 200 ema as well right here also had a supply zone which formed over here and carried out into resistance over here. So you do have another 61.8% retracement set up here. And like I said earlier, you know, golden ratio, strong resistance every time it pulls in. If it decides to get over it, it's obviously that could invalidate it. Uh, so if it does get over the 61.8, you know, maybe this similar setup would not play out. And you can see the same thing with FXI. So just resistance, same thing I showed you earlier. So that's what we'd be looking at on X and ARC both 61.8% retracement setups. You'd be looking for resistance, continued resistance. If you wanted uh, for ARC, maybe wait for this Friday low to get taken out, which would be at 42.10. So if it gets under 42.10, that gives you, you know, pretty clear shot down to the next demand zone, which forms right here. This is a rally, rally base, rally demand zone. So you could see it, you know, get down to there. 
and try to base out about there. And that's at about the $40 range. So ARC, looking at puts. Next, we're going into PDD, a Chinese ticker. You see it formed a rising wedge, is now breaking the uptrend. You got test one, test two, multiple tests here, another test right there, and finally starting to break down. Ideally, you'd see it move down to 89.36. Comes from that pivot low right there. I could just see it now coming down to that area. I'd probably try to base out about there, or maybe hold up the 50 EMA as a general area of support. We type in FXI, which is the ETF for Chinese large caps. You can see a similar setup, which could also validate the bear thesis. And if you guys aren't up, up to date with the news we did shoot down a chinese spy balloon apparently not sure if that will heat up relations between us and china but it is something to consider considering you know the ccp did respond and say that you know they could respond in a similar fashion sh and shoot down something of ours so just something to keep an eye on um, but you can see i mean fxi same thing test one test two test three breaking down the wedge uh, finally broke the uptrend line probably could see you know that move down to um the 200 ema and 50 ema confluence right here so if you wanted to i mean you could look at puts on fxi instead of pdd um fxi does have really good liquidity on the options so it has you know strong volume and open interest pdd usually spreads are a little bit wider implied volatility is pretty high so the, the premiums can be a little juiced up so fxi could be an alternative if you want that chinese put exposure um, without worrying about spread risk or you know overpaying on implied volatility or anything like that the pdd you're looking at puts i think this is the obvious bearish setup um, you can see a lot of other high, you know, high growth names uh, kind of hitting local resistance and starting to sell off. I mean, we did have a looking at my main watch list of 220 names you see right here. There was a lot of red across the board. So just something to keep in mind. We could see it down Friday, down Monday, pretty much carry over into Monday's open. So you just have to, have to be careful. You can see the dollar is up a little bit and we'll get into that because there is something interesting happening in the dollar. So we'll go over the five again, UPS. We're looking at calls. Um, we've got that wedge breakout. It's pretty nice to the upside relative strength compared to the SPY um, and QQQ on Friday. CVX pulling into a local support, looking for calls on that, make a base on that support. X pulling up to, into 61.8% retracement. ARC also doing the same thing, looking at puts on both of those uh, due to the 61.8% retracement um, rejections. PDD or FXI if you want to do that one instead. Chinese tickers uh, breaking out of the uptrend line or the rising wedge, whatever you want to call it, and could see minor resistance down to, you know, 89.36 uh, FXI that 58 main 200. So two calls three puts and I would say all have a pretty good thesis behind them technically. Next we're going into the SPY going into the indexes here. So you can see uh, SPY finally broke that 410.49 just shot straight up for a day or two. Now finding resistance at this Jackson Hole supply. So this supply zone came from when Jerome Powell spoke at Jackson Hole. A bunch of Fed members they go out to Jackson Hole Wyoming they maybe they have a ski trip or something but they you know do talk economics and they do broadcast that from jackson hole and on this day powell said the word pain so many times which i think triggered a lot of algorithms uh scared a lot of wall street you know into thinking that the feds gonna pretty much you know go balls to the wall on tightening so this resulted in a huge sell-off and i think that's why we could be seeing small resistance here that finally tested that Jackson Hole supply. Your main level of focus this week for spies, obviously for 1049, the same thing as last week, which is this resistance. If you wanted to get under that resistance again, um, that, that could be bad and it could have flushed down to demand. Um, we want to see it making a base here for the bulls. If you really wanted to be bullish um, on that 41049, make new support and then um, be able to clear the supply to get up to 431 peak. So 41049 will be your main level of focus if we open up below that Monday. I think you have a really good case for you know day trading puts. If it wants to make a base off 41049 at the open or if it wants to reclaim it, that gives you a really good you know day trade for calls back up to supply short term. So we are at a little inflection point here. Last week you did get your trigger over 41049. They gave you a nice trade for calls and did stop a lot of bears out even too because 41049 was a huge resistance. And you can see the squeeze did happen. But I mean instantly we sold off. I'm not sure if that's because of the, the Chinese news or if it was just because of all the bad economic data we did get on Friday. We had like non-farm payrolls and we had uh, some others as well and that made the dollar skyrocket. I mean I'm talking over one percent which was just insane because we were still rallying and bouncing up, which totally confused a lot of people. We even had 10-year yields up and other yields as well. 
just straight skyrocketing with the dollar. A lot of people, uh, with myself included, were so sketched out Friday that the market was still rallying on high yield side dollar. Some people, you know, didn't even take a trade, which rightfully so was a good idea because we did end up selling off. If you go intraday here, despite the high yields and dollar, market still bounced really hard. Eventually did form a multi-top and sold off very hard. And this could be contributed to the Chinese balloon situation. But uh, who knows, it could just be, you know, just all supply and demand and, you know, people taking profits and getting out, starting to hedge after a massive rally, uh, or it could be news-based and just, you know, straight panic. But otherwise for SPY, like I said earlier, that 41049 is in focus. You wanna see it staying over that or getting under that. Me personally, I'd like to see it get under 41049 just because we are starting to get a little overextended to the upside, maybe pull into demand where we could buy the dip, you know, about down here at the 402s, 403s or something like that. So just watch that 410, 49, and uh, especially this Jackson Hole supply, which is obviously clear resistance, at least on the short term. Next, we're going into QQQ, and if you tuned in last week, we were covering this downtrend line. We just said QQQ looked really good here, more favorable than the ES or the SPY. And the reason was because on the on the QQQ and on the NASDAQ futures, they both had that confirmed downtrend break instead of kind of struggling at the line. There was just a clear break. And that's pretty much why we concluded that tech was having a way better, way better week than, you know, just regular broad market. You know, tech was just absolutely exploding to the upside. Another thing that was helping tech, you know, pretty much blast off was this 296.88. Once it got over 296.88, you could see the squeeze just started to go crazy. So that 296.88 was our level of focus last week. We said we needed to get over that and as well the 200 EMA to get more upside. It was able to do that. You did have the downtrend line breakout uh, in your favor. You had the MACD in your favor. So a great week for bulls. And uh, hopefully, you know, somebody saw this and, you know, was able to make a little bit of money on tech. So this week, your levels of focus, obviously still that 296.88. It needs to stay over that to hold the structure. But then you do have this 31108. So this 31108 was a CPI day. The CPI reported to come out on this day and had crazy strong resistance. This might have been, I'm sorry, this was from the day before. So this is from the day before that CPI print in September leading to this gnarly gap down. So we can see why this 31108 had a pretty hard struggle because you do have this large sell imbalance. So you have this huge green day leading straight to a very large sell imbalance and you could see why maybe you know people are taking profit of this area because they don't want to get caught in something similar if there is another sell imbalance to the downside so for me um despite you know being in an uptrend and breaking out of this line short term i feel a little bit more bearish on qqq i did buy some puts 40 days out at the starter position i did one contract you know at 800 bucks you know something around that so i do want to see short-term resistance on this if you're more of a short-term trader you want to see it get under friday's low at 304.54 you don't even have to mark it on your chart you'll, you'll know when it gets under 304.54 that and if you see it flushing with volume you know that's a good good sign to get puts and maybe day trade but otherwise for swing traders you you know same thing you want to stay under 31108 and you do want to see that move down to 296.88 for a back test we we'll probably do something like this come back back test make a base off that previous resistance right here that's your two levels of focus you have that 31108 and the 296.88 that we had last week which is this resistance next we're going into the iwm so this is my more favorable setup for the indexes and this is purely because of this inverse head and shoulders or cup and handle pattern um we did say once it got over 189.86 you had a clear shot to 193s 193s came from this supply which is also the jackson hole supply similar to spy so this is a supply from the jackson hole speech you can see why we said once it got over 189.86 it had all that free space and you know sell imbalance to fill back up into supply and it even broke through that so this ex exceeded my price target which is really nice uh for small mid caps i can't really be any more bullish until it gets over 202 and uh, which is the supply it's a rally based drop supply zone pretty gnarly one too so we need to see it get over that otherwise you can see resistance up here if it does come up and test this you can see it you know rejection straight off um naturally so iwm uh maybe just wait for it to get up to supply if you want to you know day trade puts or take a put swing trade uh because it could have a little bit more space before it does tap the supply bulls if you really wanted to go long this just wait for it to get over that that 20250 that is your level of focus this week uh if you do want to catch upside make sure it gets over that 20250 you know have a stop loss you know under 200 or something 
or if it does decide to go back into supply, that could be your stop loss as well. Not really the cleanest setup this week because it did break out of the pattern already and, you know, gave a nice little rally, you know, to where now it could lead to a little cool down or a little bit of consolidation. But otherwise for IWM, if it did pull back, you'd obviously maybe see a, you know, pull back back into the resistance area. We'd try, probably try to back test about there and hold up as a base. So yeah, personally, I, I don't really see a position on this one this week until it gets up into supply or wants to break over that. Um, if it gets into supply, it shows clear rejection. You obviously have the green light for puts. If it wants to get over to a 250, you do have a short-term breakout trade, even though that would be a little bit overextended and maybe a little risky to chase up there. Uh, you would get that green light, you know, to see some more bullish momentum if it got over that. Next, looking at the VIX, this is the volatility index. So last week we had this 18 level that needed to get cleared under if you wanted to see a more of a rally in the market. It was able to finally get under that briefly and it did flush down very heavy into 1706 as a low, uh, which is not quite my 1634 price target I had if it got under 18. Uh, if you remember from the couple videos we've covered, that 1634 comes from this little base down here. And you can see why if it got under 18, it, there's a good chance it would just flush this free space down into that low. So, I mean, it got close. Uh, didn't quite hit it before bouncing up pretty heavily and the market finding volatility again, short term. Now you can see that it is forming this falling wedge so it started to get into a consolidation pattern here, which I mean, history shows once it gets a little too consolidated, eventually it will break, even if it's up or down. But ideally for a falling wedge, obviously it's a bullish pattern. So if this turns into a bullish pattern, like a falling wedge, that would give it, you know, potential breakout to the upside. If you're bearish on stocks, you would need to see VIX get over 1895 again, which is this little pivot. And also just get over the 20 area, which is more of like a psychological level. Once the VIX gets over 20, people will start getting, you know, they start questioning things. They start selling. Premiums get a little bit more juiced and volatility does have that chance to come back. But otherwise for VIX, you just want to see it, you know, continuing this consolidation pattern. And eventually, you know, it will result in some type of breakout or breakdown. You can see that the VIX has just been ranging um, compared to 2022 to where, you know, you're getting very solid trends and just you know crazy up and down activity all year so this is actually pretty ideal if you're you know bullish on the market and you you know don't want to see that crazy movement all the time the vix is starting to die down a little bit and this 2022 to 2023 average close did drop pretty gnarly at one point i mean it was up in like the 27s 28s or something like that from when i was tracking it you know months ago now from last week it dropped from 2532 to 2520 and this goes all the way back to the start of 2022, which is when we started raising rates and the Federal Reserve started their tightening. So that's why I think it's essential to track the VIX for these years, as well as once we get enough data, we'll track it for 2023 and see what the average close is for this year as well, once we get a little bit more data. So yeah, like I said, just want to see it remaining in this wedge. Um, if you're bearish on stocks, eventually you're going to want it to break out of here with a clear, you know, obvious breakout and not a fake out that's just you know consolidating if you're bearish also on stocks you want to see it getting back over that 20 level same as usual if you're bullish you do want to see it breaking down this wedge um and heading you know down to that 1634 as well as get under 18 flat again because it seems like this 18 area i mean it just keeps hanging out every time it gets under it a little bit it'll bounce back up so you do want to see that clear break showing that volatility is cooling down again and like i said that 1634 just comes from this little pivot down here uh, from January 2022 when it did peak to its low. So this is about the lowest the VIX has been in a good little minute, uh, which is good for bulls. But at the same time, you know, it's doing that consolidation. Uh, it's not really like capitulating down heavily. You can see like the hesitancy, you know, the traders uh, starting to price in that volatility, maybe, you know, just by buying SPX options, uh, buying and selling SPX options and influencing that as well, as well as institutions, you know, just buying massive amounts of SPX options. That's obviously going to influence how the VIX is moving uh, since it is purely calculated off, you know, complex math and SPX options. Next, we're going into the dollar. So this is the DXY, the dollar currency index. So you can see, I mean, the same thing, still holding that same base, that 101.29 that we covered last week. I did say we need to get under that, you know, to be more bullish. It was not able to do that. Uh, and that's, this base comes from this right here. This is the this was the base or higher load that it made before just absolutely exploding to the upside. So that's why I think it was so important. You know, if you want to see the dollar go higher, it absolutely had to hold that. But at the same time, it did have that monthly close 
under the COVID 2020 peak. And as well, I mean, this 2017 peak as well, uh, it hasn't cleared over that yet. So that, that could be a good sign, you know, that the dollar will go lower. But for now, it's holding that base, that 10129, and it doesn't look like it's ready to break it yet. Um, this is a pretty nice bullish, you know, hammer, some type of reversal candle on the weekly that could give us a little hint up to at least this little 50 EMA at 104s. Or if we go down to the daily, it's most likely gonna tap one of these moving averages, either reject off that 50 or come up to this 200 right here, uh, and maybe find resistance about there. You can see that there's also a strong resistance at this 105.63. Uh, had a pretty hard, you know, peak out right there and did sell off. So ideally, you know, if you do want to see stocks go lower, you do want to see that continued volatility in the currency markets, see the US dollar come up to 104s, 105s, and, you know, stay over that COVID 2020 peak. If you are bullish on the market, this is not ideal that it keeps holding this 101.29. And you can see why I've been saying that. Um, it was not able to stay under that. And once it bounced back up, we got the econ data to match it, uh, dollar soared because it stayed over there that 101.29 base. So obviously, you know, people going long dollar right at this area, which is also a very strong support. So if you are bullish on stocks, you do want to see it get under that, um, as well as stay under the COVID 2020 peak. Because I would consider, you know, anything under, it's maybe a little bit less elevated um, and people wouldn't have as much to worry about. If it's, you know, getting over and staying, you know, mid 2020 level or 2022, the 2020 levels, I mean, that's still considered an elevated dollar, in my opinion. You do want to see it getting back under that. In my opinion, the Fed really didn't say anything too hawkish, but either way, they're going to keep the rates up higher for longer. Like they said, their goal is still 2% inflation. We're at six something, so not even close. And there's plenty of other, I mean, repeated things that they've said that indicate, you know, that they're not going to cut anytime soon. They don't plan on pivoting anytime soon. I don't even think they've talked about it in a meeting uh, yet. So according to the Fed swaps, the you know, the Fed futures, people are cutting in, uh, people are pricing in a cut by the end of 2023, at least, which I mean, I think could be delusional because we don't have the data to prove that yet. Uh, yeah, inflation is coming down at a rapid pace, but until we get to that 2% goal, I really don't see them, you know, making that decision anytime soon. So the question is, are bulls delusional? Mm, could be, but at the same time, you do have to consider that the market is forward looking and they're trying to price in the future. I think we've just started to see maybe some of the, the consequences from, you know, elevated rates, like, you know, earnings contractions. We haven't seen any consequences in the labor market yet which hopefully we won't. But I mean, history does show us that, you know, the labor market doesn't, you know, usually come down, especially, you know, from this rapid pace of rate hikes. So I guess we'll have to see. Maybe the soft landing narrative is still intact. Um, maybe Jerome Powell won't even walk back what he said uh, at the FOMC meeting, which was honestly a total failure to tame the market and, you know, tighten up financial conditions even more. If anything, financial conditions have loosened. So, and it didn't really seem like he gave a shit. So we'll have to see. Um, make sure everybody trades safe. I love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get this edited, chopped up and get it out to y'all. So tune in to the next one. Love you guys. Bye.